Suspending a wire. Two infinitely long parallel wires are lying on the ground a distance A apart as shown in figure. So these are infinite wires a distance A apart. A third wire of length L and mass capital M carries a current I1 and is levitated above the first two wires at a horizontal position midway between them. So you can see that this is midway between these two wires and carrying a current I1 that is in the opposite direction. <clears throat> the infinitely long wires carry equal currents I2 in the same direction but in the direction opposite that in the levitated wire. What current must the infinitely long wires carry so that the three wires form an equilateral triangle? So if these three wires are going to form an equilateral triangle, we will have A, 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 the side lengths will be the same and the angles will be 60 degrees. So since these two uh, wires, I1, uh, uh, the, the one on top and the bottom two wires carry opposite uh, uh, currents, they will be repelling each other. So if I look at the forces acting on this wire, I need a free body diagram here. I will see that, so let's draw it from this point of view. The current is going into the page. So this is I2 and the current is coming out of the page I1 here. We have this equilateral triangle, 60 degree angle uh, on each uh, corner. And you can see that the force due to the uh, left wire will be i l cross b so if i look at uh, l cross uh, b here is i need to know what is the direction of the magnetic field created uh, due to this wire here it's going to be using the right hand rule i uh, basically uh, point my uh, four fingers in the uh, well, I point my thumb in the direction of current I2 and curl my fingers around the wire. I see that this magnetic field is basically going to be uh, perpendicular to the L vector and um, it's going to be pointing in this direction, right? So it's going to be I, uh, so that's the magnetic field. So uh, if I look at uh, the uh, so, the, so if I draw this magnetic field lines here, if you wish, that will be coming out of the board on this side and going into the page on this side. That's due to this wire uh, on the uh, left. Okay, so uh, that magnetic field will be acting on this uh, wire, uh, the, the levitated wire, and I L cross with B will give me the direction of the force. So uh, I point in the direction of the current with my four fingers and then I uh, curl down towards the magnetic field and the force is basically uh, going to be repulsive. So I know that uh, when, they, when they carry currents in the opposite directions, the force is repulsive. So that information already tells me that this force will be making 60 degree angle uh, with the horizontal. Okay. So that's the long way is to find the direction of the magnetic field uh, due to the left wire. And then looking at I L cross B to determine the direction of the force. Or we can say if they carry directions in currents in opposite direction that it will be a repulsive force. So it will be in this direction. Likewise for the right wire it will be a repulsive force. And since they're at the same distance uh, with respect to this wire, they will be creating the same magnetic field. So the force magnitudes uh, should also be the same, but the angles here are 60 degrees. Okay, so let's write down these observations. Since I1 and I2, the two steady currents, run in opposite directions, the top, the levitated wire, and the bottom wires, bottom wires, 
repel each other. So we have already talked about the free body diagram. The force due to the left wire FBL will be the current the top wire carries its length cross product with the magnetic field created due to the left wire. And this is I1 L, L is the length, mu zero I2 over two pi A because it's at a, at a distance A from wire two, uh, cosine 60 degrees in I hat direction and I1 L mu zero I2 over two pi A sine 60 degrees in J hat direction. So you can see my coordinate system here. This is I hat, this is J hat direction. So I'm taking the X components and Y components. Well, you can see the X components will cancel each other. Okay, <clears throat> and similarly, the force due to the uh, magnetic force due to the right wire at the bottom will be I1 L cross magnetic field due to the right wire, BR. It is I1 times L mu zero I2 over two pi A. That's the magnetic field created. Now take its X component. It's in minus I hat direction, minus cosine 60 I hat and the Y component I1 L mu zero okay so it's going to be uh, mu zero i2 divided by 2 pi a and then we have sine 60 in j hat direction so as i have uh, argued here since they produce the same magnetic field at these two points the force magnitudes will be the same so the x components will cancel the y components will add up and will be balanced by the weight of this wire so we will see that the magnetic field fb on the top wire uh, the magnetic force on the top wire is due to the right and due to the left wires and it is because we have a positive and a negative sign here the x components cancel just uh, the y components will add up so we will have mu zero i1 i2 l sine 60 divided by pi a in j hat direction because we're adding them up we will get twice uh, these two. So we will have the twos canceling and giving us pi A. On the other hand, the weight of this wire, the gravitational force is minus mg j hat. Now, uh, we, we're going to have equilibrium established uh, when the net force is equal to zero at equilibrium we must have some of the forces acting on wire one to be zero. Therefore, we should see that this magnetic force must be balancing the weight. Mu zero, I one, I two, L sine 60 divided by pi A must be equal to the weight Mg. And sine 60 is cosine 30, which is square root three over two. So we can now calculate I2. I2 should be two mg. So I'm substituting for sine 60 squared three over two. So I will have two, uh, two pi, let's see here, two pi mg a divided by square root three mu zero i1 times l 
So that will be the current required to establish equilibrium. Okay, so we're talking about suspending a wire. So we have a wire that is suspended on top of these two wires, the left wire and the right wire. So we have this equilateral triangle, all side lengths equal to A, angles 60 degrees. And when the two wires carry currents in opposite directions, they repel each other. So this one will create a magnetic field so that this will be repelled. And this one will also repel this. Uh, the magnetic field created by the wires can be followed using the right hand rule and uh, IL cross B is the force but basically we have learned from our previous discussion that this force is repulsive so that's just going to be the direction of the force. They carry the same current, same distance, therefore the magnetic force will be the uh, in same magnitude but so the x components will cancel the y components will add up and that's exactly what we see here when we write i1 l cross with the magnetic field um, and the y components are simply i1 l mu 0 i2 over 2 pi a the magnetic field created by the wires sine 60 to find the uh, y component so when I add them up, I find the total magnetic force mu zero I1 I2 L sine 60 over pi A. But this is going to balance the weight of the wire so that we will have at equilibrium net force equal to zero. When we substitute for sine 60 squared 3 over 2, we obtain the current required the current that must flow in the infinitely long wires so that they form an equilateral triangle to be 2 pi mga divided by square root 3 mu 0 i1 times L.